and welcome tonight to our Bible study time. The signal is going out to Facebook land and let's see who gets the signal. Let's see if I even get the signal. Oh, there it is. Our Yay. Bible study time. All right. That means right. I'm on. We're live. Let's see if you get on. And Pastor Jennifer's oh live. Oh my gosh, Gail's on already. So let's see. Is she on? I don't see it. it. Oh, yeah, she's I see her on here. Okay. I don't see the comments there, here. I don't see any comments. I don't oh. even see a place to put comments. Okay. Well, that is let's say see more, maybe. I don't know if that's going to that's just that. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, and Bob's there and uh, well, they're all saying hi. Everybody's saying hi. Everybody's saying hi. We're not too sure why. Where did our... my comments go? Well, that is kooky. Oh, look at that. Why is it over there? It's right there. Oh, that's creepy weird. So this is uh, interesting in that <laughs> the comment area has changed on our computer situation. So anyways, hello, Miss Gail. God bless you, Mr. Bob. Hello. God bless you on here as well. Tony, hello. And Karen, hello, somebody. Uh, Mr. Bill, God bless you. And uh, Ladina, hello. Oh, wow, everybody's on time. Woody Woo. and Sue, awesome to see you here tonight as well. Hello, Andra. God bless you. Look at everybody shooting on. I'm seeing. And while I'm saying it, hey, everybody give a shout out to say happy anniversary Yay. to Bob and Gail Kirk. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. God bless you. Amen. All right. So there you go. It is exciting. Miss Louise, God bless you. Welcome tonight as well. We are excited that you are here with us. Praise the Lord. All right. So we're everybody. where it looks like everybody we, was like on quick tonight. Yeah. Oh, like, oh, there's the happy anniversaries. There and there's, it goes. Uh, amen. Amen. So what a cool cool joy it is to celebrate your anniversary and be with here with you and us here tonight so praise the lord about everybody. okay good <laughs> good so as we were saying the the weird thing about the screen situation not too sure so if you move that up then it loses uh the comment section i wonder if we hit this dropping it down is what does that do man look at that how weird hmm that is so weird. So you're going to have to. Uh, uh, That's do, just what it is. You're going to have to do that. So you have to bring it down when you go to type. So I don't know what, what does that three dots do? Three dots. I don't know what that is. Uh, da, da, nope. da, da, da. Pop out? No. no. I don't I think so. I what that does. If I push. Nope. Didn't want that. Okay. Hmm. So, anyways, go back to the other one and see if it's okay. See. Oh, you right here. Yeah. Okay. See, it's weird. just, it's just, it's just a different. Uh, I didn't want to mess it up. Different screen. So, anyways, all right, all right. So we're we're always uh, having some fun uh, when it goes on here. Um, hello, uh, Mr. Uh, Stephen. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you here. Um, up. Oh, uh, so. Mom says can't stay. She's out of town right now. But prayers for you all, and it's good to see you on here. As well, hello, Miss Debbie. God bless you. Glad you are on here tonight, as well. Well, it looks like we got a bunch of people on on early. Yes. God bless you guys. So, it's interesting. As I said, the 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 little picture here has changed. Probably the same to you all, but to us, it's different. But that's okay. That's okay. It's not a problem. It's not a problem. So she'll just have to go in between, back and forth when she's trying to mm -hmm. type and not. So mm -hmm. it's not a problem, anyways. Mister Michael, how you doing, buddy? God bless you, Mike. My man right there. All right. God bless you. Oh, there you are. Miss Sue, how you doing? Miss Riga, how you doing? God bless you as well. And yes, indeed, as Miss Sue has uh, told us, we are praying. We have a couple of our saints um, in uh, facing some situations. So Miss Jean has taken a fall, as you know, and we're praying for her. And she has some damage uh, to her body. So we want to be faithfully praying for Miss Jean to heal 
Uh, also, Martha Edwards uh, is in the hospital. So both of Miss Jean yes. and Martha Edwards are in the hospital uh, dealing with different things. But please pray for Jean Goldsby, Sister Jean, and Sister Martha mm -hmm. Edwards as they're both in the hospital battling certain health issues. So our God is good, and he will take care of them as we do it. Hello, Heather. Good to see you on here as well tonight. All right. So we got our anniversaries. We got our prayers and we are praying. Uh, in fact, uh, we are just thankful for that. So we all caught up. All right. There he is. Okay. Well, hello, friends and family. God bless each one of you here tonight with us. Welcome to Hanging with Pastors A and J. And we are excited. I am Pastor Anthony. Pastor Jen. Just saying hello to each one of you, and we are thankful. She's still trying to navigate through it's the comments. It's okay. It's, we're just going to have to deal with it and figure it out later. She'll do the best she can um, to do so. I think if you just hit return right there, it will it will do it. There you go. No problem. Wow. All right. So we're good working together, <laughs> taking this thing together. It is. But we're blessed to have you here. Thanks for taking time to uh, be with us here in our Bible study and uh, appreciate it as we are talking God's word tonight. So God bless you and thankful. And we hope and pray that you're doing well and that you're staying healthy, trusting in Jesus. So I'm going to go ahead and pray. And if you see my eyes kind of wandering down because that's where I'm looking down to the screen. Normally I'm looking this way, so it's kind of weird, but no problem anyway. So let's pray tonight and ask the Lord to bless. Amen. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for this study and we just pray, God, that you are with us and work out all the technical things. As long as people can hear us and see us, hey, God bless this time. And let us just study the word of God together and may each one be filled with the spirit right where they're at. And then may you speak to our hearts and teach us the word of God. Thankful for that, Jesus. In your name we pray. And each one together said, amen. 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 Well, God bless you. And let's get on this journey. Praise the Lord. Tonight, we're going to continue our wonderful journey in the word of God. And we are going to ask you to turn your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 16. Proverbs chapter 16. We finished off Proverbs 15 last week, and now we're going to jump into Proverbs 16 this week. So this is going to bless you. I know it will because this has some wonderful uh, words of encouragement, and we are thankful. Hello, Cameron. God bless you. I think maybe I said that. All right, so let's jump into uh, our first verse here tonight, um, because what we're going to discuss as we launch into Proverbs 16 is what we're going to discuss tonight is we're going to talk about how many times a person's plans can be different from what God actually desires for their lives. How many know that we can make certain plans sometimes, but sometimes God has a little bit different take on it, right? God has a little bit different plan, and, and I'm thankful uh, that God doesn't always do it the way I want it to be done. And, you know, hindsight teaches us that, you know, that <laughs> I'm glad God didn't do it that way that I asked him for because, you know, we look and, and, and we can see how things transpired and, and truly see that, oh, God was in this and I am very thankful. So what we're going to talk about tonight is how, again, our plans can be different from God's actual desires for our lives. And yet with the freedom, and here's the kick, and here's the exciting thing, with the freedom that he gives us in our lives to actually choose our path. That God actually gives us the free will to choose our path. And as because of that, though, because of God's, you know, uh, you know, allowing us to choose our path and make our daily decisions as Christians, as those who are seeking to follow God. Right. We need to really consider our motives on why we do what we do and we need to consider how we live our lives day by day. So knowing that God has given us the choice, there's also a responsibility that comes along, especially for those who have placed their faith in God and are choosing to walk with God and to serve God and to honor God. So with that, we have a responsibility. There is no doubt 
that we want to always believe, right, that God is working in our lives to bring out always the best for us. There's no doubt about that, right? So we always want to believe that God is working things out and that we want to believe that because Romans 8.28 tells us this, and you remember Romans 8.28, Romans 8.28, a very familiar verse that tells us, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who, get this now, of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. So we know that we always want to trust and believe that God is working things out. But with that, with the gift of free will in our lives, with the gift of free will, we must be willing to allow God to work in our lives by submitting to his plan. So, yes, God has given us free will, but if we truly want to believe and know that God causes everything to work together for good, we have to be willing to let him do the work inside of our life. Meaning that when he directs, when he opens doors, when he shuts doors, we cannot be those who simply push through the barriers that, that God may have put up in front of us. We can't just muscle our way. In our family, what we call people who try to do things, we call it moosing. So kind of like a moose just kind of mooses it. So like our kids just kind of like right now, Zane is just, he just mooses things because he's kind of a strong little dude. And so when, when people go and they just kind of shove you, you're like, hey, quit moosing me. It's just something that our family has taken up a long time ago, uh, and I don't know why, but so we always say that. But, but what I'm saying is that when God either opens a door or shuts a door or puts that barrier in front of us, for whatever reason, we can't be those that just moose our way on through there. But the ultimate choice is ours. The ultimate choice is ours. We either turn our lives over to God in love, because remember, it says right here, he's working everything together for good for those who love God. So we either turn it over to God in our love for him, right? Mm -hmm. Or we continue to take matters into our own hands and then deal with what life throws at us. So there's a choice there. Do we turn it over to God, submit to God, right? Allow him to work all things together for good? Or do we take matters into our own hands? And then when we do that, well, we're going to have to deal with the consequences, as we kind of talked about last week, yeah. before, okay? Now, I say all that to get into our first verse because this is important. And let's look at 16.1 here. And here's what it says. We can make our own plans, but the Lord gives the right answer. In looking at this, it makes sense exactly what it says. We make our own plans, but the Lord gives the right answer. So indicated here is the obvious. We just don't have all the right answers. We just don't have all the right answers. Though people may feel they do, only God sees the whole picture. Everybody likes to think that, hey, I got the solution. I got the answer, right? Hey, call on me, call on me. I got the answer. But only God, <laughs> the, the screen, it, sorry. You did the, the it, hands it, it, thing. It, it, it came, there it is. Got little. you back. Hello. <laughs> all right. But many times... Here's why it is that we can't feel that we have all the right answers. Why? Because many times we are moved by emotions, desire, or, and lack of contentment. So when we make decisions, we often make them by our emotional status. We make them by what we desire, what we want, mm -hmm. or simply because we're just not content. One, 
one day we might just simply decide, hey, I want more. I'm not happy. I want to change things. And a lot of times that comes from experience or simply because, you know, we have an emotional constipation. We have a situation in our lives that we're dealing with. Yet God, and let me just let me just say one thing that I've always liked to tell. Don't ever make big decisions based on emotions. Yeah. Be careful. If you are emotionally charged, pull yourself back out of the situation. Give some time to let it sink and let it rest in there. And what we are doing as believers is giving time for God to work. Mm -hmm. Never make decisions based on emotions. It's important. And, and should I throw in your response to things? How you react. Sometimes your reaction is too emotionally charged. And then later you look at it and go, ooh. I said <clears throat> a couple of things I shouldn't have said. Because there have been plenty of emails that I've typed up in response and they were too emotionally charged and thankfully i didn't hit send mm, got it yeah you know and Understood. then you look at it again you go okay let's change some of those word choices right right so before we make our own plans we have to understand god in all his wisdom has a specific place a specific time and a very specific purpose for our lives at any given moment. And when we choose to do it differently, differently than what God has established for us, because again, he sees the whole picture. He sees before us. He sees the, the future, the present, and the past. So God sees the totality of the whole picture. So when we step away from that plan that God has established for us, when we choose to do it differently, the results will likely not be what we hope for. Because we make our plans, but only God has the right answer. The Apostle Paul said this in 1 Corinthians 10, 23. He said, you say, I'm allowed to do anything let me put that up for you. I'm allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for me. You say, I'm allowed to do anything, but not everything is beneficial. This in the context is speaking to the freedom that we have in Christ. That the free will that God gives us, and this gives the reaction of saying, hey, I'm allowed to do anything I want to. And Paul would say, yeah, you are. You do have that freedom, and so do I. But he says, but be careful because everything is not good for you. Not everything is beneficial for you. So though you have the right to do what you choose to do, not everything is the best option. So we have to be careful. But even so, in spite of our mishaps, which we often do, God's love will always accomplish his plan and his purpose for our lives, which we read in Romans 8, 28. We know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God. Mm -hmm. So even in our mishaps, even when we've made a bad choice or a bad decision, know that it is God's love that will always accomplish his plans and his purpose. But hey, understand this, the road of life is so much easier when we seek and follow God's direction. How many can say amen to that? Amen. I don't want to always have God cleaning up my mess. I would rather seek the answer from God by prayer and patience and allow God to direct my footsteps, mm -hmm. which is the few verses down, which we won't get to, but we will get to. So now let's move into. We won't get to, but we'll get to. Not tonight. Oh, okay. People may be pure in their own eyes, 
but the Lord examines their motives. You see, this gets to the heart of the matter. People who make decisions to do what they want to do will always find a way to justify their actions. People may be pure in their own eyes. People doing what they want to do will always find a way to justify their actions. As Christians, we want to do this. We don't pray about it. We just do it. We will find a way to justify why we did that. People who do not want God in their life will justify why they don't want God in their life. Because they think, as it says, people are pure in their own eyes. Unfortunately, this thought pattern is what keeps people from pursuing God's forgiveness. Because people feel that they are basically good and have no need to repent, have nothing to be sorry for, have no need for God's forgiveness, and they simply do not need to turn to God to change their lives. Because people may be pure in their own eyes. But listen to what Romans 3.10 says, because this is the truth. As the scriptures say, no one is righteous, not even one. As we would also be told in scripture, for all have sinned and fall short of God's glory. So to think that we have it all together, to think that we have all the right answers, to think that we basically are good and do not need to turn to God, we are only fooling ourselves from receiving that which God wants to place into our lives. It's a very dangerous place to be in life when a person simply feels they have no need for God to direct their affairs. It's a dangerous place to be when they don't allow themselves to see the error of their way. You probably have been there. I've been there. But the Bible tells us that we have to be careful in this mindset. Why? Well, Jeremiah 17, 9 and 10. The human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? But I, the Lord, search all hearts and examine secret motives. Look at I give all people their due rewards according to what their actions deserve. Understanding that scripture says that if we open up our hearts to God and allow him to direct our plans, our affairs, to cleanse our heart, that we will reap the benefits from that. But if we choose to shut our hearts from God, we will reap what we're doing. Remember this, Jesus came to give us a way to be cleansed from all unrighteousness. And it will only be a person's pride that will keep them from his salvation. Talking about people may be pure in their own eyes, but the Lord examines their motives. People have a lot of pride, and yet our pride cannot stand in the way of receiving what Jesus came to do for us. Because the Bible says that God examines our hearts, He examines our motives, and He Himself 
made a way for our hearts, for our lives to be right with him through Jesus Christ. Because of this problem. But if we refuse to accept that we need his salvation, we need God's forgiveness. If we just think that we are good without him, we will ultimately lose any reward that God has planned for our lives. We will lose that which God has planned for you, for me, through Jesus Christ. We will lose that reward. But listen, that does not have to happen. That doesn't have to happen. Because Proverbs 16.3 shows us a way to not allow our rewards to be taken from us. He says, commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. As you're saying all this, you know what I just keep thinking about is that like when we're doing things, when we're making decisions, when we're doing that, we can justify it to make it sound like it's wonderful. Almost like convincing ourselves mm -hmm. that we didn't have an, a different motive, a more maybe self motivation in it and you can even talk yourself into believing that your uh, your intentions were all for the right reason and all for the good but ultimately god knows yeah and you can even try to fool yourself you can try to fool others but god always knows the true true motive behind anything that we're doing and if we would just say it's it's not really about what i want I'm going to do whatever God wants because I know in the end it's going to come out perfect for me, which is usually why we're trying to turn things for what we want because we want it to come out for our best. But if we would just let God do it, we wouldn't have to come up with the reasons why we're doing whatever and cause all this extra commotion in our lives and just let God handle it. It's going to come out to the very best for us, which is what we wanted in the first place. Yeah. We put too much work into it. Yeah. God's saying, here, I'm making it easy for you. Let me decide for you. And we don't. Yeah. Well, some of us do. Some well, of us and do, that's right? it. And that's what you're saying is a lot of times we make excuses yeah. for what we are choosing to do that may not be what God wants us to do. Yeah. And people may appear in their own eyes as we've just discussed. But the reality is that the Lord knows our heart and our motives, mm -hmm. and we can't run from God. We just simply cannot run from God. And we can have more excuses until the cows come home mm -hmm. for not actively serving God as Christians, as people who are following God. But we've got to be careful because we, we're not going to convince God. Mm -mm. God has a, a, a standard. He has a level of what he wants us to come up to. And yet, a lot of times we just find ways to justify why it is we are doing or not doing what God wants us to do. And and so I and please don't think that everything I'm saying is like you're doing it at a deceit or mean or you want more than you deserve or anything like that. But sometimes God's got this awesome thing for us and we're we're working it out to get get that blessing kind of a thing and god's like all right that's what you want but i got this really awesome thing okay yep yep and we might miss out on the real big blessing it may work out in our favor we it may be fine but we may miss out on that that ultimate blessing that he had for us that's it what cameron says is sometimes we convince ourselves that it's a god thing even though our desires are what is making us do it and that's exactly Ooh. what what we just yeah what we just mentioned and that's important mm -hmm. and and the thing is is what's important to understand is that we are coming out of this pandemic and many people have gotten used to mm -hmm. you know not engaging like they did pre-pandemic now, I understand there's still virus and I understand there's still all that stuff, yeah. but things are getting 
better. Mm -hmm. As we've been praying for, we understand that that's the reality. And we're not saying that you're out of God's will by not coming to church or anything like that. But what we are saying is that there's going to have to be a point where we re-engage. And many people are doing that now. But the reality is our excuses are becoming less and less impactful because the reality is God is saying, okay, it's time to come back together. It's time to reunite. It's time to re-engage. And, you know, and that's what we're doing. We are experiencing a form of revival here at the church, mm -hmm. seeing people come and get and say, it's absolutely wonderful, mm -hmm. but we need to do it together. And the church needs to. So again, we're not saying this or that. Yeah. Because I love this online ministry and those, I mean, we got people on the, that are in different states that are on us with that's us right. right now. And that's absolutely wonderful. Praise God for that. I think Shirley's on there with us, yeah, right? Yeah, Shirley's She's, on right now. So that's awesome. And that's Jim that. and Bobby. Yep. And Jim, Bobby. And that's absolutely phenomenal to be able to have this relation through this. But what I'm saying, if we can engage in the things of God, we've got to engage. We've got to re-engage so that we can continue to grow stronger yeah, you, together you, you may be blessed by this but you might be missing out on a little extra blessing if yeah right yep there you go if so let's jump into verse three as i talked about if people don't turn themselves over to god if they refuse to accept god then they will ultimately lose any reward that God has planned. But it doesn't have to happen like that. And here's how we, not only for the non-believer, but also the believer to gain the rewards of God and to have their plan succeed. And it's simply stated, commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. So once we commit ourselves to God, which is goes along with the same thought of, of where it tells us in, in Peter tells us to um, brain, brain stop. Erp. He says to cast our cares upon the Lord for he cares for us. The same idea is to commit your actions to the Lord. And the, the whole idea of that is giving yourselves in submission over to God. Commit your plans, commit your actions, commit your life, commit that which you are seeking to do over to God first. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and he will take care of everything else. So here, the shifting is now changing in that the answer is given to us to achieve godly success. Success is in the eye of the beholder. Yes. Meaning that when one what one person sees as success may not be what another person sees, right? Yeah, absolutely. Success is in the eye of the beholder. Especially when it comes to a person who has a change of heart by God. What they have may have in the past BC, before Christ in their life, what they may have seen prior to God working in them as success in the eyes of the world, as Paul said, I've had everything, but now having Christ, all that stuff is like dung. It's garbage. It's nothing compared to having God. So before Christ in our life, we might have saw in the eyes of the world success was having all this stuff. But then Christ comes into our life. He changes our heart. He changes our outlook. He changes our whole life. Now those things that were successful are really mean nothing. They really mean nothing. But here in this scripture, the idea is achieving success but not just worldly success, but rather godly success. Success in God's eyes, which will certainly differ from what the world sees as success. The command here is, and remember that, this is not a suggestion mm -hmm. for the believer. And remember we talked about 
the comparison scripture in the Proverbs, the wise versus unwise. Mm -hmm. Those who follow God, those who choose not to follow God. So mm -hmm. this is wise advice for those who are seeking to follow God. This command, commit your actions to the Lord. Not a suggestion. Why? Because God wants us to succeed. God wants us to prosper. God wants us to have the victory. No, wait a minute, Pastor, you're prosperity preaching now? No, I'm telling you that God wants the best for you. And again, who knows what that means? Because success in everybody's life is different. So we have to understand, we want godly success. What does God want for my life? What does God want for your life? What does God want for my wife's life? For ours together. That's godly success. And it's going to look different. It's going to look different. So the command here is that if we want any kind of success in life at all, we must first turn our plans, our actions, over to the Lord to first work them out. Mm -hmm. Kind of like when you are going to build a building, you have to draw out the blueprints and you have to take the blueprints to somebody who knows how it's supposed to work. Then they sign it off and say, okay, now you have the permission to build. Right. Because they know that these blueprints are solid, that they will build that which is safe and strong and able to do what you want it to do. So in very similar comparison, we are to hand over the blueprints of our lives of what we want to achieve, roll them over to God, commit them to God first, let him work the details. Then when we do that, there is no doubt that when we com completely submit everything to the Lord, we will gain lasting success in this world. But we've got to commit them, everything over to the Lord. Submit it to God first. Seek first God. Give it to Him and your plans will succeed. And I believe that this is not only for our Christianity, but I believe it applies to everything in life. Because, hey, God wants you to be the best you can be too. I believe that. Mm -hmm. I certainly believe that. God wants you to enjoy life. But it has to come by first committing, submitting ourselves to the Lord. Only then will our plans ultimately succeed. Only then will our lives be successful in God's eyes. What a blessing. What a blessing. You know, I like this scripture because when you're reading it, it's, it's like that. I want to say it's like an if-then statement. It's kind of like you commit your actions to the Lord and this will happen. Do this. But the and part is the big thing because the and means it didn't stop. It doesn't mean commit your actions to the Lord and it happened. It, it's there. And maybe your plans will succeed. It's, it, it's like guaranteed that commitment piece is there. And so it's a guarantee. Yeah. That if God's God is the one you, you say here, God, I'm, I'm committing my actions to me. I'm making that commitment with God. For you to decide my actions. What am I going to do here? I'm leaving it up to you. It's guaranteed. Amen. Love Amen. It. Absolutely. I, you know, how many self-help books have been written on here's Too the many. plans for success. <laughs> but really, the plans for success is Proverbs 6, 16, 3. It's right there. It's right there. There's the plans for success. Yeah. Right? Command. Do. Win. I mean, it's simply there. Man. And this is not 
obviously, I don't want to say that this is a guarantee. Well, meaning that, meaning that, oh, if I, you know, that that God is guaranteeing that all things are gonna just, you know, you're you're, you're gonna get anything you want. What I'm saying what is, 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 it doesn't say that. But a lot of times, you know, also I'll give this to God and I'll get that. You know, it'll always succeed. I'll start this business as long as I give it to God, and then it's going to be prosperous and grow to the mega business. It doesn't really always mm. indicate that there's a, a a guarantee to everything we do or want to do, but this is a way of life to ex to expect and to obtain godly success, mm -hmm. if you will. If I if I explain that, I was going to say because it says your plans will succeed. And like you said, everybody's definition of success is different. Yeah. And God's definition of success for whatever that plan is may be different than your definition mm. of what success in that yeah. plan is as well. Yeah. So it, it's not always our our thoughts because our thoughts are not his thoughts. Our ways are not his ways. Well, as I as I gave the so, the the kind of the idea, the comparison of a blueprint. Yeah. What happens is you draw out the blueprint. And then sometimes when you get it back from the engineer or whoever it is looking it over, mm -hmm. there'll be a bunch of red marks all over it saying, mm -hmm. no, you have to change this and this and change that and change this and change that and change this and then resubmit it so we can give you the approval. So maybe God does the same thing. We commit it and God says, okay, red line this, 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 do this, 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 do it this way, that way. No, that's not for you. No, ax that out. And then it will, it will be successful. That's what God does. I was Okay, so sometimes success means learning from an experience, too. Yep. There's a lot of broad ways to look at this. Wow. <laughs> All right, well, let's get into verse 4. Now, now it gets a little bit different. Mm -hmm. It says this, The Lord has made everything for his own purposes, even the wicked for the day of disaster. Now, Obviously, this proverb is difficult to process as it may seem to indicate that God has made the wicked. The Lord has made everything for his own purpose, even the wicked, for a day of disaster. It must first be understood that God did not create evil or wickedness and that they exist because of a choice to rebel against God and his will. You see, the devil was created as one of God's arch angels, top dog, but chose to rebel against God, therefore causing evil or wickedness to exist. Some say then, why did God allow this to happen? Well, the short answer is that all creation is created with a free will to choose their own path. And some, like the devil, choose to oppose God and embrace wickedness. So no, God did not create evil nor wickedness but with the act of free will, everybody has a choice to embrace God or oppose him. If you embrace God and follow him, that is living righteously. If you oppose God and go against him, that is living unrighteously or having uh, or being wicked in God's eyes. But yet even as people choose to do good or bad, God will work through all things, all people to accomplish his perfect will. So what it's saying here is that even when people choose to follow or not, whether they choose to be righteous or wicked. God has made everything and uses everything for his own purpose. There are examples all over scripture 
on how God uses those who deny him and choose to do evil things. But there's examples of how God uses those type of people to work out things for good. One example, Joseph and his wicked brothers. Yeah. We know that Joseph's brothers chose to enslave him, tried to kill him, to snuff him out. But God used their plan to work out greater things for Joseph's life. And not only for Joseph's life, but for those whom God would bless through him. In fact, it was said this, and you know this, in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. Here's what Joseph said to his brothers. You intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. So we see... Many times over and over that the proverb says the Lord has made everything for his own purpose, even the wicked for a day of disaster. So God can still use those who choose to oppose him or not follow him to work all things for good for those who love him. Joseph loved God and God used Joseph's life to save the lives of many people, even the brothers who opposed him mm -hmm. and tried to snuff him out. The ones who were doing the harm to him. Radical. Wow. Absolutely radical. So true. But yet the heart of Joseph shows when he shows love, grace, and kindness because he had the authority to repay them for their evil deeds. But did Joseph do that? He did not. Why? Because scripture says, do not repay evil with evil. Mm -hmm. Absolutely wonderful. Wonderful. The bottom line is this. When we look at the scripture of 16.4, nothing escapes the eyes of God. And nothing, absolutely nothing, can hinder his good plan for all those who choose to trust in him. Not even evil people. Nothing gets in the way of God. But listen, even so, God still has a desire for people to come to him and escape the day of disaster. His desire and his heart has always been for all people to do good things, to choose to be with him forever. Second Peter 3, 9 says, The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise. His promise is to return for his people, to take the church up in the rapture. That's what it's talking about here, as some people think. Because you know, they've been preaching this same message that this preacher still preaches for hundreds of years. Hey, get ready. The Lord is coming. His return is very soon. And then people say, hey, man, I've been hearing that ever since I've been a kid going to church. I've been hearing that forever. When's the Lord going to come? Well, look at what second what Peter tells us. The Lord's not really slow about the promise, as some people think. No, he's being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. He doesn't want anybody to face the judgment seat. He doesn't want anybody to be cast away from his presence. And some would say, but I still want the Lord to return. And yes, we do. But I like to turn the tide back to each one and say, aren't you glad that the trumpet didn't sound right before you gave your heart to Jesus. Yep. Aren't you glad that the, the, the Jesus didn't return and snatch away the church right before you said, Lord, come into my heart and forgive my sin. 
I, for one, am thankful that I had that opportunity. And I know that I am saved, that I'm going to be with God. So the Lord is being patient so that not everyone will be destroyed because he wants everyone to repent. May it be so. May all people come to Jesus very soon. Because we must make no mistake. Our God is holy. Our God is sovereign. And he must one day judge the wickedness of this world. Make no mistake. Our God loves us more than we can imagine. But he must, because he's sovereign, because he's holy, because he's righteous, one day he's going to have to say enough is enough. May we all come to Jesus. And none of the preachers are lying. They all said it was soon. coming soon. Yep. Well, every day it's one day sooner. Or one it's one day. day closer, right? I mean, yes, soon. Now it's just more soon. Or sooner. Or That's whatever. right. That's right. <laughs> the Lord detests the proud. They will surely be punished. As I just simply, this is verse five. It goes along with the same thought pattern. Verse four, the Lord has made everything for his own purpose, even the wicked for a day of disaster. The Lord detests the proud. They will surely be punished. Now, let's, let's just kind of unpack this a little bit and then we'll be done for tonight. You see, those, and this is very deep to my heart, because those who insist on rebelling against God and oppose his plan of salvation through Jesus Christ, those are the people that are often filled with self-pride that dictates that they are above God's plan for their lives that they have all the answers, that they don't need any help. They don't need God's salvation. They don't need Jesus to die for them. They have it all together. They have all the answers. But listen, this type of mindset and heart is an abomination before the Lord. The Lord detests this kind of pride. The pride that says, I don't need God. I'm above all that. Why? Because they will not allow themselves to be saved. You see, when a person denies God's plan, God's salvation through Jesus Christ, they are in essence discarding the very reason for the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ. Telling God, it doesn't matter that you sent your son to die for me. Ooh. Imagine how that affects the heart of God. Imagine the pain that our God feels when people simply throw away what Christ did for this world. And as we know, the Bible has a word for this. It's called the unpardonable sin. The only sin which God cannot forgive. Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Why? What is the unpardonable sin? Well, in short, this is the sin that God cannot forgive because this sin involves the rejection of God's Holy Spirit calling people to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord, their Savior, because we are sinners and have fallen short of God's glorious standard. It is the Holy Spirit 
that beckons people. It is the Holy Spirit that Jesus said would come and he would convict the world that we have a sin problem. And the world that denies God, the world that denies the beckoning of the Holy Spirit, telling us we need God's salvation, we need God's forgiveness. They reject God's grace. That is a sin that God cannot forgive. If a person chooses to not believe, they literally choose hell over heaven. Think about that. Why in the world would I choose to go away from where God is in heaven? But God, but God has provided a way of salvation for all people. We do not need to go the way of separation from God. We do not need to go the way where God cannot forgive us. God has provided a way. His name is Yahweh. His name is Jesus. For John 3.16 tells us, For God so loved the world so much that he gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. To accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior is to gain eternal salvation. To lay down our pride. To lay down what we think is best. And to lay it and submit it over to God and say, God, I'm sorry. Forgive me for I am a sinner. I need your forgiveness. I need your help. Is to inherit eternal life with Christ Jesus in heaven and in doing so we will also avoid any punishment that is reserved for those who choose to oppose God I like you want all of the blessings that God came to this world to give Jesus Christ is the way the truth and the life. Let us come to Christ. Let us submit to God. Let us turn over everything, our whole life. Let us commit ourselves. And I guarantee you this, friend, commit everything in your lives to God and your plans will succeed. And with that, I say, Amen. Amen. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed the study. Some powerful things, some really eye-opening, challenging words, but things that we must know because I do believe we're in the last days. I do believe time is short, and I do believe that Jesus is coming back real soon. Things are ready, so let's not get ready. Let's be ready. Amen. Amen. Sundays. One way that we are being ready for Jesus is coming to church together. 8.30 in person, 10.30 in person online. We are blessed to be enjoying some great times of God doing great things. And we even have great things coming up and you're going to hear about it very soon. I am excited. So, hey, be part of it. You don't want to miss it. Great things are happening. I guarantee it. This past week, Pastor said, you know that one Sunday that you miss and then you come back the next one and then people go, oh, you missed it. It was the best. Don't. You don't want to feel that. No. Nope. Just saying. No. Nope. You don't want to feel that. Got things going on. Probably going to talk about on Sunday. So Probably. You, you don't want to miss it. All right. All right. So going on uh, Tuesday's prayer, praise, and proclaim service, 930. Hey, this is the foundation. As you know, many of you come to our prayer. This is why we are strong in this church, why you are blessed in this church. We're praying for you. You're praying for us. We're seeing God move. It's because 
people of faith are coming together to pray, to praise, and proclaim God's goodness. So that's on Tuesdays, 930 here in the church. You're welcome to be part of it. Also, Wednesday nights, hanging with Pastors A&J, it is our privilege to to teach the Word of God, to be with you and do life with you this way. And we are excited for this opportunity. Things are changing. Things are going to go back and, and, and things are happening. So, But right now, we are blessed to be sharing the Word of God with you. So we're excited. But God bless you for that. And don't miss it. And don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. So with that, we are thankful for you, our church family, and our friends who continue to support our church in so many wonderful ways. God bless you. And we are thankful that you are on this journey with us, with Jesus. So let's let's uh, stay true to each other and stay true to the word of God and our church family. So God bless you for that. We hope that you're uh, being safe. We're praying for you. And please stay safe, mindful, and healthy, my friends. And watch God bless your lives. Commit it to him watch him. Pastor Jen's going to pray. And can I just say, Absolutely. I know it's all coming up on three weeks after, but Easter's still happening. Amen. Don't forget that part. Amen. Still happening. We're still celebrating, still celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is alive today. Right. Amen. All Amen. right. That's it. Amen. Oh, pray it out. All right. Okay. Lord, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for your word. I thank you for the powerful reminders and the encouragement behind it and the all of it just how you will take every part of our life and if we would just commit it to you we would be living that successful life and whatever that means according to you for us lord i just thank you for that and i thank you for the opportunity to be here with each one and i pray that you be with each one bless them keep them safe and healthy lord i just i just love them so much so much. Lord, thank you for being with each one and just thank you for tonight. Again, keep everyone in safe until we can meet again in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Well, we want you to have a blessed night. We love you. It's Pastor Anthony. Pastor Jen. Saying God bless. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you very soon, hopefully on Sunday. God bless. Bye-bye.